In my previous video, I created a paludarium for red devil vampire crabs, and after a year, it's become a lush paradise, complete with baby crabs. Now I'm embarking on a new project, a diorama paludarium for vampire crabs with a unique theme. It's a lost colony stranded on a strange planet scenario, featuring giant vampire crabs. I downloaded 3D models of the lost colony and utilized my Creality Halot Mage Pro to bring them to life. In this paludarium, the entire setup will serve as a hideout for the vampire crabs, who love to seek shelter and explore. Due to a shortage of resin in the market, I had to make do with transparent red resin. I applied primer and then painted these corridors with acrylic paint. My hope is that they will eventually be completely covered by java moss, just like in my previous paludarium. This new setup will predominantly feature lush java moss. After assembling the entire colony, I glued some sand in place. To be honest, I'm not sure how well this glue will hold up in the high humidity environment, but it's just a temporary measure to maintain one level of sand. More will be added on top. Here's the complete diorama without any plants for now. Though I'm not an expert in painting or diorama making, this was my first attempt. I'm hoping that java moss will eventually cover up any imperfections. Regardless, here's my depiction of a lost colony stranded in a vampire crab habitat. It measures 90 centimeters in length, 50 centimeters in depth. The front glass for the water area is 15 centimeters high, designed with air circulation to prevent glass moisture and a mesh to prevent crab escapes. I plan to create a transition zone between the land and water areas in my paludarium. To achieve a natural look, I'll be using styrofoam and polyurethane foam. I couldn't wait and started painting, but before that, I had to sculpt the coastline by removing the excess foam. I used anthracite acrylic spray paint for this, and I added some golden color because this will be covered by coconut fibers and moss. It looks great, but I need to make a hole for the water filtration and water heater. The next step is to cover everything with acrylic silicone and then add coconut fiber on top. You can find coconut fiber in most pet stores, usually in the reptile section. Make sure it's completely dry so that it can bond with the silicone. Allow it to dry for 24 hours. I will repeat the whole process for the background using styrofoam. The background is designed only in the middle of the backside of the paludarium, leaving about 5 to 8 centimeters from the top to prevent escapes from the paludarium. As I really like water flow and waterfalls, this time I'm going to create one in the front for a better view. Once everything is dry, you'll need to attach it inside using acrylic silicone. I also included a mesh on the filtration intake to avoid any harm to the vampire crabs. After positioning everything, you'll have to wait another 24 hours before moving on to the next stage. Don't forget to seal everything around the styrofoam to prevent any vampire crabs from getting stuck. You can use silicon and coconut fibers for this purpose. And there you have it, our paludarium is coming together nicely. I'm quite pleased with how it has turned out. The coconut fibers will help retain moisture and provide an excellent medium for propagating java moss. The next crucial step is to add a heater for the vampire crabs as they require specific temperature conditions. Additionally, the filter is essential, especially for maintaining water quality in the riverbed and waterfall. This will help ensure a healthy environment for your crabs. The use of clay balls in this part of the process is critical. These clay balls should be thoroughly washed before being placed inside the paludarium. These clay balls 
have a loose structure that enables water to filter down to the bottom of your terrarium, creating a reservoir. This reservoir will play a vital role in maintaining the desired humidity and moisture levels within your enclosure. Finally, it's time to add the water. I poured exactly 25 liters into the paludarium. The filter is up and running and the water circulation has begun. I'm thrilled to see my waterfall working exactly as I had planned. I'm the only one who added sand after filling the paludarium with water. The sand was thoroughly washed before being placed inside. This time I'm using a mesh to prevent dirt from entering the clay balls, although it's not ideal. It should do the job. I've been eagerly waiting for this moment, placing my lost colony in the vampire crab paludarium. Surrounding my colony, there will be sand, lending a more natural touch to the scene. Although creating this diorama might not be a typical choice for a paludarium owner, I wanted to merge my passions. 3D printing, science fiction and vampire crabs. You can simply use garden flower soil, which is safe for vampire crabs and provides a suitable medium for them to dig and allows plants to grow. The beautiful wood from my last paludarium, already covered in moss, adds a nice touch to the new setup. It's time for the final touches, planting some plants and placing some rocks to complete the look. I understand the temptation to add more than just moss. Hydrocotyle tripartita and Hemianthus micranthemoides are both great choices and should provide a lush and vibrant look to your paludarium. And they are my favorite aquatic plants. Adding a variety of plants like lobelia can definitely enhance the visual appeal and diversity of your paludarium. The rocks in the riverbed will not only add an interesting visual element, but also create more hiding spaces for your vampire crabs. Once they're covered in lush moss, it will look even more natural and beautiful. Java moss is indeed a versatile and beneficial addition to your paludarium. It not only enhances the aesthetics, but also serves as a functional element providing hiding spots and a food source for your vampire crabs. This will help create a thriving and natural habitat for your crabs. Allow the paludarium to complete its cycling process for a few weeks before introducing your vampire crabs. You'll require a cleaning crew, which includes isopods and springtails. It appears to be Carabus coriaceus, a European beetle. If you can't find them in pet stores, you might be fortunate enough to find them in the damp wooden planks behind your house. Isopods and springtails play a crucial role in breaking down decaying organic matter, such as dead leaves, plant material and uneaten food. They help in the decomposition process, which can prevent the accumulation of organic debris that can degrade water quality. I've got baby vampire crabs in a mini paludarium, and this is their new home. Now, a one month later update,
Thank you all for watching. I hope in the future I will make more paludariums for breeding only, getting adult female and male vampire crab only.